Hello! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And this would be now our part 2 of the lesson in module 1. So in this part, again, sabi ko sa last video, we will focus on the model of Niels Bohr. And we will have a closer look of the model made by Niels Bohr. On how does he say so that electrons are in its orbit and exactly found on its individual orbits. Planetary model of Niels Bohr said that electrons move around the nucleus in a fixed circular orbit. So from the model made by Niels Bohr, according to him, this is the nucleus where the proton and the neutron would be found. And the orbit where Niels Bohr is referring to ay itong mga bilog sa labas ng nucleus. So this is what Niels Bohr is referring to the orbit. And sabi ni Niels Bohr, in this fixed orbit, there will be electrons could be found. So, dito daw natin makikita ang mga electrons na umiikot sa kanya-kanyang orbits. And this orbit is referring to energy level. So, yung level ng enerhiya na meron ng isang electrons ay nakadepende sa kung anong parte ng orbit sa nandun. So, orbit as Okay, so orbit as energy level, referring to the level of the energy, energy level is represented by letter N. So, N stands for the energy level N1 2, 3, and so on. So, in the illustration, this would be our nucleus. This is our energy level 1. The second circle will be the energy level 2. Another circle will be energy level 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. The energy levels of the orbit in the model of Niels Bohr, as you go farther from the nucleus, sa palayo ng palayo sa nucleus, sa pataas ng energy. So, energy increases as you go farther from the nucleus. Mas malapit sa nucleus, mas mababang energy. Mas malayo sa nucleus would be higher energy. Okay, so one perfect example from the Niels Bohr model is the flame test. This flame test is from the activity that we are doing from the previous year using the module in science. But then, this is not part of the module, but I just wanted to share to you the flame test that we're doing to test the elements that producing different colors. So the question is, how come that different element could produce a different color? So for example, that we will test the potassium. When we put a flame in an element potassium, it would produce a pink color. Um, a medium of pinkish color. While testing other elements would also give you another set of colors. So how come na nakakapagbigay ng iba't ibang kulay ang bawat element? So this activity would best explain with the model of Niels Bohr. Okay, so I have an application on my cell phone that I also used from the previous year on my students wherein it tests flame test. So, I have found this on App Store. The name of the application is Beaker, wherein it composed of many elements. So, these are the elements. May mga compound, may mga elements lang. 
wherein you can test the color of the flame. So since in our school, in the public schools, we have uh, quite less materials to be used in the experiment. So I just made use of an application in our cell phone to test flame test. So for example, I will choose K potassium. So lalabas yung batong potassium. So ayan si potassium. Hanapin natin si potassium. No? Ayan. So ito si potassium. So maglalagay ako ng flame. So the color of the flame is color pink. So meaning to say, when I put a flame in a potassium, it would give me a color of pink. Okay, another, for example, I will test the flame color of AG. Ah, sige, aluminum na lang. Para medyo familiar sa atin. Aluminum. I have AL aluminum. I will put a flame on an aluminum. And then, aluminum gave me a color white. So, alam naman natin that the color of aluminum is color white. Ayan, tapo na natin si aluminum. Okay, for example, BA barium. Ayan. So, for example, I put a flame on barium. It gives me a color green. Yan. Ano nakakapagbigay ng colors ang iba't ibang elements? Example, ginamit natin si potassium. It gives us the color pink. We also tried barium, which gives us color green. And then we also tried AL aluminum that gives us a white flame. So this... Bohr's model with the energy levels, this best explain how the flame test or how does an element gives off the color. We have energy level number one. So we have N1. We have energy level number one. If the electron stays in its orbit, so nandito lang siya, hindi siya umaalis. So meaning to say, this is what we call as ground state when we say ground state there is no emission and there is also no absorption of energy so the reason why that the electron stays in its orbit hindi siya gumalaw it is because no emission and no absorption of energy that is called ground state means say walang energy na natanggap wala ring energy na release. So, according to Niels Bohr model, the electrons ay pwede daw lumipat ng ibang orbit. Pwede rin namang bumalik. The electrons could move up into higher energy or it could go back to lower energy. So, paano nangyayari na ang electrons ay nag-move pataas or bumabalik Bababa. So, that is the activity flame test. Once ng isang atom ay binigyan natin ng outside energy, for example, we put a flame, binigyan natin siya ng flame or apoy na imitan yung ating atoms the tendency of the electron is to absorb the energy or absorb the heat. So, nung nainitan si atom, tinanggap niya o inabsorb niya yung heat coming from the flame, the tendency of the electron is to level up its energy. At dahil naabsorb niya yung heat, the tendency of the electron is to move 
to higher energy. So, from energy level 1, pwedeng mag-move si electron into energy level 2. So, mawawala na siya sa energy level 1 because the electron absorbed the heat coming from the flame. Then, nag-move siya into higher energy level. And this is now called excited state. Once that the electrons become in excited state, those electrons are now unstable. And since they are becoming unstable, yung absorb nilang heat should be released. So, kailangan nilang i-release. And the release of the heat is the release of the color of the flame. So, kaya nagkaroon ng kulay yung apoy na ibinigay natin sa isang atom. It is because the electrons that is excited dahil nag-move siya into another energy level, it becomes unstable and becoming unstable makes the electron to release the energy and the released energy is the production of the color. Kaya nagkaroon ng kulay yung flame na ibinigay natin dun sa atom. And once na na-release na nila yung energy dahil nabawasan o nag-emit, emission, di sabihin, ini-release o inilabas nila yung heat, then electrons will now go back to lower energy level. So, that is how the atoms produces the color in the flame. So, let us use an example of H or hydrogen in the Niels Bohr model. So, since hydrogen is the number one element, it has the atomic number of one as well. Then, the number of electron of hydrogen is also one. So, we have one electron in the atom of hydrogen. Now, if we put a flame into a hydrogen, kagaya nung inexplain natin kanina, this flame could absorb by the hydrogen and once that the hydrogen absorbed the heat, this electron would jump Tatalon, baliktad pala. The electron will jump to higher energy level and once na inimit naman niya yung energy, it will go back to lower energy level. So in the idea of Niels Bohr, according to him, Electrons do move. Electrons could jump into higher energy level or electrons could jump going back to a lower energy level. So that is what Niels Bohr proposed in his model, planetary model. That's why it looks like a planet where this is the sun and this is the orbit of the individual planets na inilagay niya into his model that this one is the nucleus where the proton and neutron is found. And on the individual orbits are the electrons. And electrons could move and jump to higher or lower energy level. But the question in the idea of Niels Bohr is that, does it apply to other atoms? And it did into atoms that has more than two electrons. Yun yung sinabi natin from the 
video number one. Hindi siya gumana to atoms na mas marami sa dalawang electrons. And it only applies to hydrogen. That's why the model of Niels Bohr is considered incorrect. Kasi hindi siya pwede gamitin sa ibang atoms at exclusive lang siya para sa hydrogen. But, though it has incorrect in the idea of the Niels Bohr, it paved the way for the current theory of atomic model. Kasi kung hindi naman dahil sa idea ni Niels Bohr, hindi naman tayo magka-come up with the latest idea of the atomic model. And one fact about the atomic model is that electrons really do not move. Hindi talaga gumagalaw around the nucleus ang ating electrons. Hindi talaga siya nagta-travel around the nucleus. Instead, the probability of finding electrons is not exact. Kaya nga probability, it is because pwedeng oo na nandyan, pwedeng oo na wala, or pwedeng nandyan, pwedeng wala. If electrons do not really move around the nucleus, and that is what we prove in the model of Niels Bohr, then how? How can we find electrons in the atoms? And that question will be answered in our next video on our next video we will now focus on the latest model of atom which is called quantum mechanical model so this ends our discussion on the closer look of the Niels Bohr model and i hope you get something from the Niels Bohr model so stay tuned with our next video because that is now the discussion of the quantum mechanical model bye and see you on my next video don't forget to subscribe.